Grade 8, Chapter 1, Lesson 1, Rational Numbers. A terminating decimal is a repeating decimal where the repeating digit is 0. A repeating decimal is the decimal form of a rational number. A rational number is a number that can be written as the ratio of two integers in which the denominator is not 0. Every rational number can be expressed as a decimal by dividing the numerator by the denominator. The decimal form of a rational number is called a repeating decimal. If the repeating digit is 0, then the decimal is considered terminating decimal. So over on the left here, we have our classification of numbers. All the numbers that we know um, are rational numbers. There are irrational numbers as well. Rational numbers can be written in the form of a fraction. Inside the rational numbers, there are more specific numbers called integers. These are our negative numbers. And not negative decimals or negative fractions. They're the opposite of our whole numbers, which is the next category. Whole numbers are counting numbers, but they also include zero. And our natural numbers are just our counting numbers, one, two, three, four, and up. Natural numbers are the most specific type of number. Over here, we have the rational number 1 half. It is a repeating decimal in that it, the zeros repeat. But because the zeros repeat, we call it a terminating decimal because we don't need to write all of those zeros. Same thing with 2 fifths. We have 0 0.4, 0, 0, and so on. The zeros repeat. So we actually would write it as 0 0.4, and it would be terminating. 5 sixths is 0 0.833 with the 3 repeating. So we would say it does not terminate because it will never end in zeros. Write each fraction or mixed number as a decimal. The way we're going to do this is we're going to simply divide. 8 into 5. How many times does 8 go into 5? It does not. 8 into 50, 6 times, minus 48 is 2. Bring down the 0. 6 into 20 twice, minus 16 is 4. Bring down a 0. 8 into 45 times, which is 40. So our decimal is terminating, and it's 0 0.625, or 625 thousandths. Letter B, negative 1 and 2 thirds. I know the integer portion is negative 1, so I'm going to focus just on 2 thirds for right now. 3 into 2, 0 times. 3 into 20 goes in 6 times, which is 18. Subtract and get 2. Bring down the 0. 3 into 20, 6 times. What's happening here is we're repeating the process, which tells me it's a repeating decimal of 0.6 repeating. However, we can't forget about the negative 1, so our decimal form is negative 1, 0.6 repeating. And we show repeating by putting a bar over the repeating digit or digits. Letter C, 3 fourths. Some of you may know this decimal um, off the top of your head, but just in case you don't, let's do the division. 4 into 3, 0. 4 into 30 would be 7 times. Minus 28 is 2. Bring down the 0. 4 into 20, 5 times exactly. So this is 0 0.75 or 75 hundredths. Negative 2 ninths. 9 into 2, 0 times. 9 into 20 twice, which is 18. What's happening here? Again, it's repeating. So it would be negative 0 
Repeating. For letter E, my whole number is 4. So just focus on 13 25ths. Now something else you can do, instead of dividing, if you notice the denominator can be easily put into a power of 10, like 10, 100, 1,000, 10,000, you can actually just make an equivalent fraction and go from there. So in other words, 25 goes into 100 four times. So I can multiply the numerator and denominator by 4, and I would get 52 over 100. We would properly say this as 52 hundredths. And the way we write 52 hundredths is 0.52. I do have a whole number of 4, so we bring that down. This is a terminating decimal, and it's 4.52, or properly named as 4 and 52 hundredths. That only works for certain fractions. Letter, you could always divide as well. Letter F, 3 and 1 11th. Again, I'm just going to focus on 1 11th right now. 11 goes into 1, 0 times. Goes into 10, 0 times. Goes into 100, 9 times, which is 99. Subtract and get 1. Goes into 10, 0 times. Goes into 100, 9 times. And we've got ourselves a repeating decimal. 3 is our whole number, so 3.09 repeating, and since both digits repeat, we put that bar over both the 0 and the 9. In recent season, the St. Louis Cardinals first baseman Albert Pujols had 175 hits and 530 at-bats. To the nearest thousandth, find his batting average. So this would be 175 over 530. So we're just going to do our division. 530 into 175. Well, it goes into 175 zero times. 1750, I would guess about three times. So let's see how that works out. 530 times 3, 0. 915 looks about right. Minus 1590. Do some borrowing. Oops, that's zero. This becomes a 15. This becomes a 6. Can't really see the small numbers. 15 minus 9 is 6. 6 minus 5 is 1. Bring down a 0. Again, I'd have to say 3 times. Minus 1590, 0. Bring down a 0. Goes in 0 times. Let's drag another one down. Goes into 1,000 once. And this decimal will continue, but I only have to round to the nearest thousandths digit, which is right there. So 0 0.33, and it would stay 0 because its neighbor is less than 5. In a recent season, NASCAR driver Jimmy Johnson won 6 out of the 36 races held. To the nearest thousandth, find the, parts of the part of the races he won. So our fraction is 6 out of 36, Oops. okay, so 36 into 6, 0 times, 36 into 60 once, do some borrowing, 24, bring down the 0, my guess is about 6 times. which looks about right, minus 216. Ten minus six is four, three minus one is two. Bring down a zero. Looks like we have a little bit of repeating going on. 
But since I need to round to the nearest thousandths digit, I need to go one more than that to help me round. So it would be 0 0.167. Now let's go the other way. We're going to take decimals and write them as fractions or mixed numbers. So we have 0 0.45. The proper way to say that is 45 hundredths. So quite simply, it would be 45 hundredths, 45 over 100. All we need to do here is reduce, or simplify. So divide by 5, 9 over 20, and that's that. Negative 0 0.14, or negative 14 hundredths. The last digit is in the hundredths place. That's how I know it's out of 100. They're both even, so I can divide by 2. The negative sign stays. 7 over 50, and I can't go any further. Negative 0 0.4, the 4 is in the tenths place, so it's negative 4 tenths. Again, they're both even. I can divide by 2, and I would get negative 2 fifths, which is in reduced or most simplest terms. Now, when you have repeating decimals, it's a little bit of a process. Here's what I'm going to say. I want you to first define a variable. Oops. Let x equal, and let it equal your repeating decimal. Okay? Now, there's only one digit repeating. So I'm going to say 10x equals 0 0.5 repeating times 10. And I'm multiplying by a power of 10, specifically in this case just 10, 1, 0, 1 repeating digit. So 10x equals 5.5 repeating. You just move that decimal point over once to the right. Then what I'm going to do is actually subtract that repeating decimal part. I'm going to subtract x from both sides, but remember x is 0 0.5 repeating. So I'm going to subtract the 0.5 repeating. And what happens is those go away, and I am left with simply the integer 5. On the left-hand side, 10x minus 1x is 9x. And now I can solve for x. Divide by 9, and I have my fraction 5 ninths in simplest form. Let's try another one like it. So write negative 2 in 0.18 repeating as a mixed number in simplest form. So here again, we have a whole number of negative 2. So that's going to be the first part of my mixed number. And then I'm going to have a fraction. Let's focus on just the 0.18 repeating. So I'm going to say let x equal 0 0.18 repeating. Now this time we have two digits repeating, so I'm going to multiply both sides by 100. 100 times x equals 100 times 0.18 repeating. I just move the decimal point over 2. 100x equals 18.18 repeating. Let's get rid of that repeating portion, so let's subtract x from both sides. And remember, since x is 0 0.18, I can subtract just 0 0.18, repeating that is. The repeating decimal goes away. I'm left with 99x equals 18. Then I can just solve, divide by 99. x equals 18 over 99, but this is not reduced. I can divide top and bottom both by 9 to get it in simplest form. I'm left with 2 elevenths. 
So my final answer, don't forget about that integer, is negative 2 and 2 elevenths. Let's try one more. This time I have three digits repeating, so what are you going to multiply by? Good, a thousand, but first let's do our let statement. Let x equal 0 0.273 repeating. So again, we're multiplying by a thousand, three digits repeating, that means three zeros. Thousand x equals 1,000 times 0 0.273 repeating. With three zeros it move, means I move my decimal over three. So a thousand x equals 273.273 repeating. Let's get rid of the 273 repeating by subtracting 1x from both sides. And again, 1x I can replace with 0 0.273 repeating. That goes away. I'm left with 999x equals 273. Divide by 999x equals. Now, this is actually divisible by 3. 999 divided by 3. That's fairly simple. That's 333. The other one, let's do off to the side. 3 goes into 27 nine times. And 3 goes into 3 once. So our simplified answer is 91 over 333.